What's up guys, this is my uh, Sun Gold 10K inverter and Sun Gold uh, wall battery setup. I was gonna do another follow-up video. This is my second Sun Gold inverter. I've had this one going for about four months. Uh, it's been giving me continuous power for a 2,000 square foot home. Everything on it but the uh, hot water heater, the dryer, and the uh, kitchen stove. It's been doing well. Uh, the first one, the Gen 1 one with the round screen, it, about 30 days in, it uh, was having problems and SunGold actually sent me another inverter, a replacement. This one's been doing great. So I was going to show a few quick things. I'm not a pro. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm, I'm just an amateur guy and uh, there's not a whole lot on SunGold. So uh, I answer some questions in the forum and I uh, shoot a couple of videos every now and again. So excuse the uh, poor quality or sound quality or anything but if you're thinking about these systems or these batteries i'm i don't have a lot to compare it to but it's been great for what i needed a uh, few things to remember things i've learned again like i'm not a pro at this <clears throat> but a few things i've learned uh, some of the most important things to have so i'm going to say the most important thing that i've learned with this system is to to do a bus bar so these batteries can can jump across one another these amper light plugs can jump and you can you know daisy chain these batteries together but what i noticed with doing that is that you don't charge as evenly across multiple packs as if you have a bus bar so you know if you want to run it temporarily and just you know chain them all together you can maybe it'll work out for better for you but what i ended up doing is running all the batteries to a Victron bus bar, uh, the but Victron Power In is what it's called. Of course, it looks a bit of a mess in here, but uh, that's a Victron Power In with the cover off. So all the batteries come back to this bus bar and all tie in here. Uh, the main hot hot line that comes off, the uh, positive comes off and goes through a breaker, which I got. Um, through signature solar that was rated uh, I don't remember the specs on it but it was rated correctly uh, I think maybe 200 amp uh, and then it feeds the inverter so since I sent all the batteries over to that bus bar I'm now charging and discharging much more evenly than I than I was these two new batteries were added they're fairly newer um, so we can see here that's seven amps coming out of that one it's dark right now it's nighttime and these are the two old batteries. Yeah, they're several months older than the other ones. And we can see that they're discharging a little more at nine amps. So you'll see that with old with old and new, but I noticed with the bus bar, it's definitely even evening them out a lot quicker for their charging and discharging than when I was uh, just kind of cabling them together with the, with the built-in um, plugs. So having a bus bar, very important, I think. Um, Keeping the inverter under 80%. I have uh, mini splits on this inverter. I've got a couple different things on this inverter that are, are a little heavier and I will go up to 80%. I, I've never gone over 80% utilization on this machine before. And I've read and seen that's sometimes a good idea not to keep them, keep the machines working too hard. So try to, uh, Try not put a tremendous load on these machines. These aren't 15K, you know, Solarks or big Victron systems. They are cheaper systems. And, you know, my experience, my, my rationale on that is to uh, just be a little more gentle with them. Uh, this, this, these systems, in my opinion, are good for everybody, but they're great for DIY guys. If you know how to, you know, put wires together and, and do things right, you can get away with, with getting some of these, uh, what I, you know, cheaper Chinese units, which are basically rebranded SRNE units. Uh, that Sun Gold, you know, brings over to the U.S. and distributes. If you are not comfortable with doing a lot, if you are, feel like you need a 1-800 number to call, if something goes wrong and you don't know how to wire things, I would probably go with something through Signature Solar and, and do an EG4 system and and just do that or hire a professional to do everything. So, but if you want to, you know, save several thousand dollars and get pretty good performance and uh, do it yourself, I think this is a great solution, you know, for that. I've had nothing but but good uh, good results you know i had a bum unit that you my original unit was wasn't right really out of the box it had problems with sun gold um, i shipped back the that unit and they sent me 
uh, within a week or two a replacement unit, which which I think is good and says a lot about Sun Gold. You have to do everything through email. You won't be able to, to call, but if you're patient and just send emails and document what you're doing, um, they, they typically, in my experience, will, will be fair. Will be fair. Uh, the second most important thing that I've found is this: these are manual transfer switches by uh, Connecticut Electric. And this is something that I like. I have a sub panel and then I have a main panel, which I feed both, but I like these little MTSs. So what's neat about this is that I can switch uh, between solar and utilities to feed some of these things. So if I have a problem with the inverter and I shut my inverter down, I can click everything back over to utilities. Or if I have uh, something that's a big load on my batteries and I'm trying to prepare for an emergency, I wanna save some power through the night, I want less or more on solar, I can control each circuit with these manual transfer switches, which I love the control. So if you had a big, you know, 15K unit, you know, you'd put the whole main through it, that's fine. But with these smaller units, I appreciate being able to control what I have on solar and what I have on utilities. So that's probably my second second thing I would recommend is, you know, have the ability to control a small sub panel. Uh, so if something were to happen or you to power down, uh, you, you, you know, you don't have family members complaining, you know, why does this not work? Why is that not working? Like, well, I'm, I'm wiring in a new battery or I'm doing whatever, you know, have the ability to, to transfer back to, to grid. If you have grid, a lot of guys don't. Of course, if you don't, then you know you can't transfer over to grid. But having the ability to transfer to grid is is pretty important. And the last thing, which is just as important as the first two things, uh, is solar assistant. So, if you've heard of solar assistant, uh, this is one of the most important things you need to do with these Sun Gold inverters. And what you'll do is you'll order a uh, Raspberry Pi or Orange Pi. I got this one off Amazon, and you'll image a uh, piece of software called Solar Assistant, place it on an SD card and put it, and I just put the Sun Gold sticker on there, but that's that's just a, an orange pie. Um, and then that will plug into the USB on this device. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you much better control. Now this inverter has settings built into it and you can do a lot with these settings, but you will be limited. You will be limited by how you communicate with batteries, what you do with batteries, when you're on batteries, when you're on utilities, when you're on solar, it's it's good settings, but it's not, it's not on par with some of these big, more advanced systems. So how you can get this system smarter is, you know, spend another hundred bucks and, and put solar assistant on it. So the thing that's most important with solar assistant, other than, you know, giving you good data on what's happening with your inverter is, is the automations. Okay, so automations, what's great about this is that you can create rules which Solar Assistant will give to the inverter. So I have uh, communication between all these batteries are all communicating with the inverter. And then the inverter is communicating with Solar Assistant. And Solar Assistant, just a very simple uh, automation that I enjoy is this output source, I output source priority by time and by state of charge. Uh, so for me in the morning, I can't make it. I don't have enough batteries to make it longer than a night. If I run air aggressively, I usually click over to utilities by two or three in the morning anyway. So if you can make it through the night and you're always on solar or you're off grid, this isn't for you. But if you're someone who's slowly growing their battery pack, who doesn't have it, I have an eight kilowatt uh, solar setup. I get about five or six K on a sunny day. You may, this is great because what we can do is we can set rules. So you know, from in the morning till 7.45 a.m. If my batteries are at 40% or lower, I'm on utility first. And so that means I may be on utilities for my home, but I'm also any light coming in at seven in the morning, I am charging the battery. And then once I beat 40%, I'll go over to just solar and battery only, and I'll hold up the house on this, on this system here. And then as the day goes on, Say I'm having a rainy day or a cloudy day and it's it's in the afternoon, the battery is now falling to 25% or low. It says, you know what? I'm obviously not making any sun. I'm not, there's not any sun. I'm not making any power. Uh, my, my batteries have fallen below 25%. We're going back to utilities and we're just going to try to gather as much off the panels as we can to the battery. And that's happened. You know, you get a rainy day um, and you may charge 10, 15% on the batteries during a, you know, a big rainy day, cloudy day, but you'll be on grid. And so, for me, I like that because you're not putting a big load on the batteries. You're not running the batteries really aggressively. I could run these batteries lower, but I, I don't. Um, and then I'm also able to tell 
you know, at 7.46 a.m., um, once the sun is going down, that's when I'm losing a lot of light. That if, you know, if the batteries are weak, go, I'll go over and just harvest solar. But if the batteries are good, 25 or more, let's be in SBU mode. Let's do solar and battery and stay away from utilities as much as possible. So, so these rules have been great. There's a ton of automations you can do. You can, you know, have control here if, if you've had a rainy day or, or say there's a storm coming. We've had this happen. We know a bad storm's coming and we don't want to drain our batteries down right now. Say we don't want to be greedy and run our batteries into 25% because in the night we may lose power. And that's when we would want to keep the refrigerator cold. We want to keep the Wi-Fi on, you know, whatever. But we can go ahead and just say, you know what, let's, let's stick to utilities and let's run utilities until, you know, late tonight. And so we will have 80%, 70, 80% battery by the time 2 a.m. rolls around. And if we take a bad storm at three or four in the morning and we have no power in the morning, we'll have plenty of power to run the microwave and, and you know, cook toast, run the coffee pot, whatever, because we've kind of saved some power over the night. So that's the, that's some of the great control. Of course, the solar system has an app and it has all kinds of great charts and things to tell you more about what's going on with your system. And it'll also tell you, you know, what's going on with your commands, any problems, you'll get some some logging. And it really just takes these, these little simpler inverters to the next level to be on par with some of the bigger, nicer systems you see. These, you know, sometimes five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars systems. Um, so my philosophy is to keep your equipment cheap, keep your payoff, because if you're doing this to save power and you're not off grid, if you're doing this to cut energy bills, keep your costs low, achieve your payoff quicker than if something fails, it's not a huge deal because it's paid off anyway. It's paid for itself. So right now I'm saving over two hundred dollars in electric. Uh, I've just I've been comparing with last year's. Uh, utility bills and I'm saving about two hundred dollars out of three hundred and fifty dollar utility bill it was hundred and forty dollars this this month um, so I'm, I'm saving a lot in utilities some of that is a pool pump some of that is other things which are now all through solar which I think are really helping me so that's two hundred dollars to go towards the payoff on this system which uh, with everything right now I'm I'm in at about ten thousand I have used panels and all this gear not including some wiring, framing for the panels and all that, but you know, rough, rough amount, 10, 10 grand, 10 grand. And I've got some battery backup and I'm harvesting some sunshine. Um, learned a lot, great system to get started with. Be patient with support, email them, document what you do, show them that you're doing things correctly. Get on the forum. I love DIY solar forum, get in the forums, do watch YouTube videos like you're doing. And uh, you can put the system together and get energy independent. So uh, leave comments or questions. I'll try, to, I'll try to log in. I'm not a big YouTube guy. I don't do this much, but I'll try to answer anything that's asked. Thanks a lot.